another episode, and the butterflies are are out. They're out. It's done. Too They're many done. shots already to start, but we got here a champion, right? Yes. What is a champion's name? So everybody that is following and tuning in. So my name is Jalissa Castellanos Ooh. on Instagram, Summer Jewels. I don't know how many use because people ask me summer. I've been putting summer in, but it's like two U's and two L's, something like that. But Summer Jewels on Instagram. But yeah, that's me. All right, cool. So you and we, again, we just had this conversation <laughs> two minutes ago for the <laughs> last hour. But you are a bodybuilder, mm-hmm. female competitor, bodybuilder, athlete, star, dedicated. <laughs> Almost everything you can put yeah. into it, you're along those lines. How is it bodybuilding? Man. What got you into bodybuilding for in the first place? It it literally started from just sports. So it came, it started from college sports and just trying to find an outlet. So right after knowing, we all know that after college sports, it ends at some point, right? Yes. So we're like, okay, so what are we going to do right after? So what's going to be the next step? Either some really do find an outlet, something different to substitute, you know, for that sport or, yeah. you know, and I myself was like, man, like, okay, so go to the gym, still work out, still stay fit. And I did. So coming back from <clears throat> where I went to college, came Where'd back you go home. To college? I went to Simpson University in Reading, so it was literally like nine hours from here. It was West Covina. <laughs> it was far. It, it was, was far, far for sure. Definitely tip top of California. But um, so yeah, so after that, after I graduated, I said, "Hey, man, like I I need to maintain my fitness, stay active," and I was accustomed to a routine, so yeah. I need to you know get back on that. So. I started, I found a gym, LA Fitness, right here, Bolden Ooh, Park, is where yeah, I started going, right when, there. literally, obviously, pre-pandemic, so years ago, um, but um, I started going there, and after that, I found the sport of powerlifting, mm. so a friend of mine, I would see her on Instagram, like, posting her her lifts, and I'm like, damn, that looks pretty cool, like, a female lifting hell away, I'm like, yeah. alright, so I asked her, I'm like, so, like, what is this? She's like, oh, I'm, I'm powerlifting. I have a coach. You know, I'm competing soon, yada, yada, yada. And I was like, wow. Well, I was like, I'm interested. Like, you know, so yeah. she told me about her coach that was in Huntington Park um, at that time. And so I hit him up on Instagram. Ooh. And then he was like, yeah, just come in. You know, we'll work out. I'll give you a free, sh- free session. So, yeah, I went to his house. And he has his own, like, own little, like, backyard, you know, uh-huh. equipment and stuff. Yeah, so from yeah. there... It went from powerlifting for about two years. I unfortunately hurt my back um, during a deadlifting session yep. at 24 Hour Fitness. <laughs> Relatable. <laughs> it, it's painful, man. Like I was just like, you know what? Like after that injury. Yeah. Um. So what happened was I slipped a slight slip on a a disc on my vertebrae. Ooh. So that's what happened. And after that, I was like, okay, so. I need to find something to substitute this. So I was always trying to still maintain that routine, still maintain myself, my physical, yeah. um, my routine. So what I did was find a coach with bodybuilding. So I'm like, all right, let me switch up a little bit. Yeah. So I found a bodybuilding coach in 2019. 2019. Ooh, damn. Yeah. So you're technically... Damn, like yeah. recent kind of. Kind of recent. Kind of kind recent. Of recent yeah, but you've gone full throttle. Yeah. So ever since then, I was like, all right. So, 2019, found a bodybuilding coach. Had no like, no. Uh, he gave me no like info on anything. I was just. It was basically like, all right. So here's a date. I'm like, a date for. He's like, your competition. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah. So you're 13 weeks out officially. So I hit him up in May of 2019, and he's like, you're competing in October. I'm like, all right, okay. So gave me everything that I need, and basically what he did. So 2019 is when I first started bodybuilding. I did my first competition in October of 2019. That was my first figure show, and that's where it all started. And, and it just went from there. I, it went from there. So how'd you find that, you know, because we're just talking about it, um, about the discipline. Like, you go out wherever... Mm-hmm. 
But when you're on prep, you are on prep. Like, yeah. So how did you find that balance of life and the discipline part? Like, how did you find that? Or what kept you disciplined? Honestly, it's just something that I've always told myself is, you know, if you're working towards something, you have your mindset on something specifically, whether it's one goal, two goals, work towards it. You know, do everything necessary to get to that. And whether it's really managing your time with work, with life, with social life, relationships, whatever it may be that you have going on at that moment, it's just really, you know, setting that time and being selfish. Man, you really become selfish. That's one thing you would understand. Like, they think that all your life is about bodybuilding and yeah yeah, you really do become very selfish where with your time specifically and um managing prep and family and let me tell you going to family parties and having to meal prep and to bring your food (laughs) oh man i got people all my my own family that's all you're eating yeah that's all i'm eating why i have a show they a lot of people don't understand they don't understand the lifestyle but until they're Again, until somebody's actually in there, mm-hmm. in your shoes, waking up, going yeah. to sleep in your shoes, I think maybe they'll understand. Because there's still yeah. a lot of people that that jump in, mm-hmm. but they're still half in and half out. Exactly. Yeah. And then, uh, what was it? I think it was like last week. Where I was talking about one of my boys. And it's just about if you do something and you're easy to give up, it, just, it didn't mean that much to you. It, right. So bodybuilding means that much now to you. And you know, it's part of your life. Because I've, it's it, it definitely is. It's become that part of my life because I've been in a constant, like, I guess you can say a positive battle with myself where it's like, all right, well, I've done this already. Let's try this. Yeah. So I'm always looking for something to challenge myself with, whether it's mentally, physically. And bodybuilding has been that since then. And it's like, damn. So when it came to that many shows that I've done, I did two, one in 2019, one in, two in 2020, no, two in 2019, mm-hmm. one in 2020. And I just wanted to, I wanted that win. I wanted yeah. to feel like, okay, let's continue to keep working towards that goal. And every show, every prep, it was like, all right, I kept progressing. Oof. And I'm like, all right, I'm not finished yet. I'm not finished yet. And you're still not so, done. And I'm still, I'm still not. So, good. I, so we, you brought it up, the balance part. Mm-hmm. What do you got to balance? Like everybody sees your IG working out, working out twenty four seven, and thinking like, oh, this girl wakes up in the gym, goes to sleep in the gym. But <laughs> you got a life outside of yeah. the gym. What it, what does that look like? What it, what does that involve? Or, so as far as like my routine. Yeah, you know, routine. Today? What do you got in, in your life that well, you know you got to balance? Also, like you know, I'm sure the. Again, people that will tune in and not just follow us, mm-hmm. but it's the ones that are interested about you and what you're doing because, again, you have a you have a following already because of what you do and your hard work and your, your discipline, dedication. Right. They just want to see, like, all right, she's doing it. It's possible. And especially when you relate to, like, what she's actually, yeah. life outside of it. Uh-huh. Again, social media is one part, but life is a whole different part outside of social media. So is this... Again, like, what does that look like for you? Yeah, so what really goes on throughout my day. So now as a fitness coach, you know, I do wake up every morning, 4 a.m. I'm up. God damn. And my, I start work at 5.15. So, but before that, you know, I did have, um, uh, my time did start, or my, my day did start earlier. So it would be about. Well, four o'clock, but with the job that I had before, it was going, getting everything done before 2 p.m. to get to work by 3.30. So mind you, like I mentioned earlier, Ooh. I was an hour and a half away. So I would get wake up, get my fasted cardio in, get my meal preps done, um, make sure I had everything done prior to leaving to work. So I had to get my workout in too before that. But now, oh, I've actually changed like... I've changed so much since then as far as like work wise to be able to kind of manage my bodybuilding, like yeah. my routine with that now, which it sounds crazy, but I've actually changed like my career to be able to obviously be where I'm at now, but to 
also be able to manage like working out and meal prepping, making things easier. So I do have like a time frame between nine and three every day to be able to do that now. So I've like Dang. changed my lifestyle for it. It's so <laughs> crazy. Now I think about it, it's like we're talking about it. I'm yeah, like, told damn, you. I just, I did that for bodybuilding too at the same time. But um, yeah, so like, honestly, everybody does have a job. Everybody, it's like you do have a lifestyle to maintain, yeah. you know, and, you know, whether you have a relationship, whether, you know, you have two jobs and it's it's possible. You just have to like, I really preach this to so many people, like how like they like you said, like they see me waking up yeah. and just going to the gym. Literally that's every, all I post. Every time I see like your stories, I'm yeah. like, Jim. Gym and I'm over here eating. I'm like, fuck. Dude, someone actually, yeah. <laughs> some people like, like, a while ago would like comment, like, damn, do you live in there? And it's like, no. Like, obviously, I share what I share, but yeah. it's, it's, it's what I share, but it's obviously what doesn't, what's not shown is like, you know, the so, life, life. So doing life. like what you're doing, yeah. Does that take like a mental toll on you? Um, during during prep it does reason reason being again i think what the whole platform episodes has been kind of around is is like our mental health and our mental stability throughout our journey yeah it flows boom roller coaster but you know your prep is constant constant and it does honestly mental health does play part of it because you start to like become very self-critical about you know if something doesn't go your way or if it doesn't you don't look a certain way or damn you should have done this better during a workout or dang like you cut this short but then also you got social media where people start to come you start to compare yourself to other people yeah. i've been that person i've been that i guess bodybuilder to do that because it is kind of the norm to do so yeah but and it does take a toll because you start to feel like damn i'm not good enough for the sport it's like well no one's forcing you to do it. You choose exactly. to do it. You know, yeah. you choose this lifestyle. No one said you're going to do it, you know, yeah. with a gun to your head or some shit. You know, <laughs> no no one's doing it. It's 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 what you choose because you want to challenge yourself or you want to make a change or some people do it to start a lifestyle change with, you know, either losing weight to look better, which is great. Like I love to see how people can change their lifestyle that way and get into the bodybuilding industry and compete for the first time yeah you know it's it's awesome to see and i love that but um it does take a mental mental toll on you because you know you start to second guess things and it's like damn like you know should i continue this should i not and of course when you get on stage for the first time or the second time or the third time and you're expecting a win and it doesn't happen it's like damn all that hard work yeah but what I've done every prep, every show is nothing will compare to the work I put in mm -hmm. because I did that. You yeah. know, whether it's a second place, third place win, it's like, well, you know, I did all that work. Yeah. That doesn't compare to it. So is it a, is it important for you to have a support system? Yeah, because it is important. I time. think reason being is and and whatever anybody does, like everybody. This, a, a lot of people use that excuse like, oh, well, mm -hmm. I'm not supported. Well, I can't keep doing this because they don't support what I do. It's like, well, let's yeah. talk about that because there's people that want to see you win for mm -hmm. sure. And there's people that want to see you win. But in reality, they don't want you. They don't want you to win. Yeah. So talk about like support system. What What does your support system look like? And I've gotten the best of those. Like Ooh. I've gotten those that really do support me. And I've got those that act like to support me but then it's like they throw those that shade you know yeah, like yeah talk about that it or talk about damn it. you gotta yeah. really skip this for the gym you know i've gotten that trust me like i've gotten people to really be like oh man that's all you're eating why are you eating so little but as far as support system yes it is important like you get you know i've had family or friends you know talk about you know how how do you do it and this and this and that but yeah. it's more so whether they understand it or not it's just the support like they understand okay look it takes time it takes time to have somebody that is around you in a constant to really understand like okay well she's doing this for a purpose 
mm-hmm. for one, my mom. She she's she's seen me go through each prep. She's yeah. went through the mood swings. Good God, yeah, she's gone through. <laughs> this. She's seen that. Um, you know everything that I have to you know meal prep, working out. It's like they don't see me. They don't mm-hmm. see me when I was living at home. So. Um, she understood the lifestyle she understood like you know what it came with but then you would also get you know other people that would question or that would comment like man you're not gonna look like that forever so why do you keep doing this like you know it's like yeah Yeah. i understand like i'm not gonna look like this forever i'm gonna either you know old and wrinkly i'm gonna have kids or you know later just that's yeah. gonna be a life like a family life but life. Yeah. it's i choose that i choose to either give up or i choose to continue yeah. you know and that's i want to be that mom i want to be that i've told him i want to be that mom where i'm pregnant and working out i'm gonna be that mom for sure but yeah so you get people where they definitely just either criticize because Either the it's jealousy or yeah. it's like like the the amount of work that you put in. It's like, well, like is that all your life's about? You know. But so somebody yeah. that so say somebody comes up to you and says, "I want to body build, but I'm not too sure if I'm committed to it." What would you tell them? Because there, there's there's a lot of people like that. <laughs> there's a lot of people like, "Hey, I'm gonna go to the gym. We last two days and we don't go back." Yeah, <laughs> I'd, I'd say straight up, why? What's your reason? What's holding you back? Why? I want a body build, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, why? Why? So Try why Why are you coaching? Why are you a coach? Right now, I'm a coach because I love to see, I love to see and hear the journeys that people go through, like, mm. or what they're, they're aiming for. Mm. So right now, as a fitness coach, I work at a, at a boot camp, so... It's amazing to to hear all these stories and to be an inspiration. Like I just been there for like I don't know, not even a month, not even a month. Yeah. And it's like, like my lifestyle. They all started following me on Instagram. Shout it's out like, to that sheesh, boot camp. Hell yeah, man. Like they, it's like it feels good to hear like you're an inspiration. I've barely been there a month, and it's like wow, like. And I love to hear each and every person's story, like how they started, why they started. And it's like, they just want to make a change. And it's yeah. like, damn, like, all right, well, you know, you ain't making excuses. You got five kids, you got one kid, or you got, you know, you live far, yeah. you know, you're not making excuses for yourself. You're still there. You're getting here at 5 a.m., 5.15, 5.30 class, whatever class. It's like, you're here, you know? Shit. What I tell them every morning, too, because we got we have a mic. Yeah. So <laughs> 5.30 in the morning, we bump music, we get their energy level up. And we get them going, right? So the one thing I say is, like, you woke up with a purpose today. You woke up. You're here. That's powerful. You're staying. You woke up and you're here this morning. That's powerful. Starting your day off with a badass 30-minute workout. Like, this is, you got here. No one forced you to. You made it here. You made that choice. Do you think there's a difference in, um, I know it's kind of sensitive, but do you Mm -hmm. think there's a difference in trainers? around the industry because now mm-hmm. I go to the gym let's say six months yeah. and I see my results and I'm going to tell you hey I can train you mm-hmm. so send me a DM I'll train you for so and so or whatever the price is mm-hmm. I got you so now everybody's a trainer is that something <laughs> that you look at like I don't know maybe as disrespectful because of what you already have done and yeah. how much you put into it already or is it just like, ah, oh, respects, let them figure it out at one point? I mean, not necessarily. I mean, I feel like everyone does have their opinion on that because I feel some people can, could be successful however many yeah. or how long they've gone through the experience, whether it's shorter than one person or longer, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I I feel as though, you know, if you have, you know, the means to do it or the, the clientele, you know, I don't feel like it'll... I, I don't take it to like that sensitive or that personal. Yeah. It's just like, all right, you know, cool, you know, to each their own, I guess you can say. You yeah, know? definitely. Yeah. I think, like, to obviously, because we've said it here, like, mm-hmm. I'm a high school coach. In order to coach something, you got to go through it yourself. Right, right, right. You got to go through that journey yourself. You got to put yourself through and that. And I agree, yeah. Yeah, you definitely like, do. in that situation where you're like, you want to quit, but you know, you can't mm-hmm. and you don't want to. 
and now it's like, all right, you made it. You can you continue to follow and you continue to grow in your own journey. Yeah. And now it's just like, well, let me teach you what I what I learned through my journey, and we'll go from there. Right. Is that something you apply now to your journey as as a coach, I as do. a trainer? Yeah, I definitely do, and I feel like you know how I have how the knowledge I've been given. I do want to. And I, as I, I do, I do now definitely, um, you know, spread out my knowledge to other people as well. As far as like, you know, people ask like, what do I eat on a regular basis? You know, how hard I train or, you know, um, my everyday routine, things like that. And yeah. I mean, you know, as far as it only being like maybe two years or so in the industry, yeah. it's like before that, I, of course I was an athlete, but it's, it's a different set so, of I guess it's a different sport so what you get now is a lot more people want to follow you day to day yeah they want to know what you do from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep whether I know it or not I think there are people you know it's just like it's crazy yeah. to think like yeah I mean I wake up and it's like yeah straight to work so was there a moment that you probably didn't think this would be possible or you wouldn't be here at this position yeah honestly I, ne- I didn't I never thought I would be I never thought I would be because it's just I thought okay so I have my degree in psychology mm. and I thought my career was going to be specifically in like mentioning masters I wanted to I do plan on getting a masters in forensic psychology I still plan on it I it's out there speaking in the universe it now to <laughs> I'm speaking into existence it. Hell yeah. it's going to happen yeah whenever that time comes but it's just like where my knowledge is at where my passions at what makes me happy is fitness and mm. being able to give that to another person that's trying to find that lifestyle, trying to change their ways too. Yeah. And it's like, I want to, you know, give that to other people as well, you know, because at some point it'll end for me. But it's yeah. like, at least I'll be able to say, I changed that person's life. You know, I gave them this type of advice and it's like, you know, they took it and ran with it. You're Great. Being, perfect. You're making an impact. Exactly. And, like I mentioned, I changed my career because it wasn't making me happy. It wasn't where I wanted, where I felt my heart was. I thought it was. I got promoted at the, my previous job before this one within five months of being there as a supervisor. And I'm like, man, it's stressful. Yeah. I was going home <laughs> like, damn, I have to wake up again and get my workout in, do my, my, my meal prep, get all this going, and then go to work. And deal with all this. It's like, yeah. damn, mental health is very important, but it's like, man, like this is not making me happy. It's not. And, you know, I found someone that I can definitely, you know, live with and live my life with and Ooh. change, you know, my Shout career out. for. Shout out. <laughs> Shout, Shout out. out. <laughs> Shout out. Definitely changed my career. Shout out. Shout out. He's crying in the background, but don't worry about it. Behind the scenes. (laughs) (laughs) Tears are shedding. Tears are shedding. It's just so crazy how life works. Like we mentioned, like, you know, I, we just basically, we agreed to it. I'm like, you know what? Like this opportunity presented itself and I'm willing to, you know, leave this job and, you know, I'm going to be a fitness coach, you know, and I'll go for my NASA. I'll get my, my, my certification. And was that scary? So you're going from honestly, you're going from was, a degree, bro. You're going from a degree to a secure job to, yeah, I'm gonna go <laughs> yeah. to my passion. Yeah, basically, it's basically what happened within literally two months. Yeah, I said, was like, you know what? I'm not. I, I was scared for a moment, but the support system and being able to be a mutual agreement. Yeah, and he was like, let's do it. It's never like a like a. Yeah, we talked about it, and we were like, okay, so this is what we got to do. These are necessary things to take place Correct. for it to happen. Yeah. And we did, and we're like, all right, let's do it. it it's, it's crazy how shit works, right? It like really when is. You, when you speak about it, and we're like, all right, we need to do this. Yeah. And then when shit is just happening, you like you sit down sometimes and be like, fuck, we're here. Like, <laughs> Literally, it happens all the time to me. I'm like, damn, like I really just left that job to be here. Now I live in... Torrance. Yeah. I got a job literally seven minutes away. And I was working in this job an hour and a half away. It was not worth it. And this is worth it. I'm like, mm, okay. I did it. I did you, it. You can wake up every day yeah. and be excited about it. And I tell I tell those members every morning. Because we have like every week like a, a word of the week or, you know, things to just keep their... their um, 
their purpose going to, you know? Yeah. Where what? We're at 25. Dang. Dang. See? Okay, look at this. She see. was nervous. Yeah. And I was no, nervous. She, she took like 10 <laughs> shots before we got going. I know. She was like, I don't know. Three and three and. <laughs> before we take this break, you're talking about inspiration and stuff like that. Do you look at somebody or hear something to keep you inspired or motivated? Um, I listen to podcasts. Like, I love listening to Steve Harvey, to Eric Thomas. I am as a podcast. Um, and again, the people I have around me, I find my why, I keep going, but it's always listening to those like reassuring things that I already know and just hearing it from somebody else to like, all right, yep, you're right. This is what I got to do. Um, I mean, I do find myself on on YouTube. Um, there is someone specifically, Stacy Diaz or Stacy Apodaca Diaz. I do um, look at her or watch her YouTube. Yeah. Um, Cause she does, she's Latina and she does, she's a go-getter big time. So her, some of her videos are very inspirational and I tend to like either, you know, watch them and listen to the things that she says. And it's like, damn, like, yeah, she's right. She's right. But um, more so it's more my inner self like me. I'm mm-hmm. like, all right, you know what? Like I'll give myself those, those self talks. It's like, I got to just be like, all right, keep pushing, keep going, you know, and kind of just give myself that, like, all right, you did this for this, or I feel like I'm self-defeating. I'm like, all right, get yourself together and get back on it. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you need to just talk to yourself and be like, hey, man, like, you did this shit for you, like, or you did this because of this. And just keep going. Just keep pushing. So, yeah. Team. (laughs) What that one? What? The, yeah, that's ooh, that was a good yeah. one. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we'll just take the little small break. We'll come right back because we got a lot more to say on this. So, let's get to it. You had a journey of moving to different places. Yep. Talk about that. Where did you go? Ooh. Why did you do where you? Why you went? Where you went? And how we ended here? Man. Honestly, before the podcast today, I was like, you know what? I'm going to talk about it. So I already, this, that question came in. I, already, nope. I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm ready for it. So um, where I've been. So just about two years ago. No, a year and a half ago. Let's just say about 2019, I went to an academy for corrections. So I went to the academy to become a correctional officer. And a friend of mine actually was just like, before that, was like, just apply. You never know. You know, yada, yada. Never thought I'd get into law enforcement. (laughs) Ever. Never thought. But I'm like, here I go. I applied. Two years later, got accepted. 2019, February. um, uh, Went to the academy. And from then, that's why I moved to Ventura County. So from there, moved to Ventura County from Baldwin Park. So grown. How do they say it? Born and raised? Born, Born and raised, raised in Ball Park. <laughs> 26 <laughs> years. Um, but yeah, so from there, moved to Ventura County, and I was a youth correctional officer for about a year. Mm. Hated it. I kid you not, I hated it. I thought this was something I was able to handle. Man, it was an experience for one. It was a big experience. Um, I learned a lot, but it was something I knew it wasn't going to be a career for me. Yeah. I was like, nah. So... I was always the type of person to be like, you know what, if this, sh- this shit ain't for me, I'm, I'm out. Yeah. And something kind of ended up coming up last year, in the beginning of 2020, before the pandemic, um, where I was like, you know what, this shit ain't for me. Put my two weeks, dipped out, dipped out straight up. And I'm like, you know what, this is a career that has benefits, this and this and that. But again, money was not making me happy. Mm. I was making good money, it was a career. But I was like, I am not going to work for the rest of my life. So, left that job. So, from there, um, I came back home. So, I came back home to my parents in Bond Park. And uh, got the job back in Moore Park. So, that same area where I was, I went back there. And I was a uh, residential support staff for about a few months. And that's where I was um, promoted to be the supervisor. So... Again, my degrees in psychology, so I'm like, you know what? Let me go back into the mental health fields 
And yeah. I do want to, you know, be an inspiration still and still give it a positive um, impact in those that, you know, do need that help, that are yeah. very dependent, you know, because mm. I feel as though, you know, mental health, the mental health industry or the mental health fields has been very huge lately, of course, within the pandemic, like it big. was a big, big increase. Yep. So, big. I mean, I was like, you know what, let me go back to that because I feel like I can, you know, be a voice to these, to, you know, people that do need it, you know, and I went back to that, to that field and, you know, I enjoyed it. But again, like I said, like it was just was not where I felt like my heart was at. So from there, came back home and I'm like, you know what, like I just need to find really where my niche is at, where my heart really is and fitness fitness is really where it's at and i feel like i've, I've been everywhere like really like yeah. college still in cali but tip top <laughs> of california um right by oregon and which was in reading and um yeah came back to Baldwin park went to ventura for about a year and law enforcement wasn't for me although i'm still kind of pursuing it in a sense i'm still trying to become a police officer but it's like it's it's still in the works, you know, mm, but okay. again, it's not, I don't know yet if that's really where I want to go back, but it was an opportunity that was, pre- that was presented to me, you know, I'm like, you know, I'm going to just take advantage of it and just yeah. do it. Let's see where, you know, um, but yeah, fitness, fitness brought me back this way and, you know, I'm here, but Ballin Park to Torrance now. So I've really been a little bit of everywhere. Yeah, you, you've been traveling. You've <laughs> yeah, been I've been traveling. traveling, yeah. And it's just like, I mean, I'm just taking these opportunities and running with them. And it's like, man, like my degree was in psychology, but it's like, well, should I switch it up? I'm switching it up. Yeah. So I'm kind of just going where my heart's really Ooh, leading me in a sense. Yeah, so you, you really <laughs> living by it. Yeah. I really am. I feel like it's just like, well, you know, just. Well, that's good because, take you know, life. there's a lot of people that, again, we just talked, we just said it earlier about being at a sure thing. Mm-hmm. And you literally said, fuck it. I got to do what makes me happy. And I care about myself enough yeah. to do this. And again, like, you ended up at the places you ended up because you needed to to literally get you to where now you need, you're needed. Exactly. Like if you didn't do that, yeah. It too. Like if you didn't do that, yeah. Other people you have in in your boot camp, like they never would have met you. Honestly, and it's like it's crazy because my boyfriend and I have talked about this recently, like and before, like. If we didn't make the choices we made recently in life, we wouldn't be where we're at right now. Mm. It's so crazy. It's like if you decided, if you chose a different route, you'd be in a total different part of life. Yeah. It's like, damn, that's crazy. Like, yeah, it's true. Like the the choices we make in life are really part of our destiny and where it's leading us. And Ooh. I'm big yeah. on that. I'm so big on destiny. Like, really, where we're meant to be, and I feel like. Right now, and the choices I've made in life is really where I feel like I'm meant to be where I'm at right now. So, do you regret any part of it? Do um, you didn't regret any part of it? Because, again, you are, you have a following. People look at you yeah. as an inspiration. But, you know, it's, we're not perfect. We go no. through our shit. We go through our moments. We go through our, our life. Is there any point that you had to go through and you look back like, fuck, maybe I shouldn't have done this or me or, you know, something along those lines? Honestly, yes. I think to myself, sometimes I'm like, damn, regret is something I feel like I should never say. But and I don't I don't regret any choice I've made because I I take that those choices in life that I make. I do it with purpose. Mm -hmm. I make sure that it's with complete purpose and with reason. But, yeah, there's times where I think, like, damn, like, should I left a job that I really felt secure? Obviously, it was secure, and it was a career. But, no, I think to myself, like, I was not happy. It, mm. I was very stressed. I was very um, not content. I'm like, damn, this is not where I'm meant to be. And I had those talks with myself yeah. prior to making the decision of leaving that career. Mm. Yeah, I put in all that effort. I went to a 16-week academy. I went through a bunch of bullshit to be there. And it's like, and I had my family there proud to see me graduate and go through a whole ceremony. Shit. 
and for me to just quit. Yeah, I felt like that, like, damn, like, I really did that. Like, I left. Yeah. And obviously leaving that career, and of course benefits are big, and money's, you know, making, like, 5000 a month. Like, I'm like, damn, I was there. Yeah. But I'm big on, does money make me happy? Mm-hmm. It's like, no, it does not make me happy. It's like my my sanity makes me happy. Um, you know, it's what I what I'm passionate about makes me happy. And I was not passionate about it. And I found that. Luckily I found it within time because I'm like, damn, like, look where I'm at now. Yeah. Back to the fitness where I really feel like this is where you can I can impact. inspire and make yeah. an impact for sure. That's I again we spoke about it like about who we listen to and what like and I really, and this is why this whole thing came about, mm-hmm. because Steve Harvey has said it, and I've heard it many times through him, Yeah. like, your gift will pave the way. Yeah. Whatever your gift is, and it was like, it was as funny as, if you make the best barbecue in the world, mm-hmm. that's your gift. Boom. Take it. Take yeah. it to as far as you can. Yeah. Because, again, that is your gift that nobody else has for we you. We all got gifts. Yeah, and so, yeah. you know, talking about now that, transferring into being a Latina woman in the industry you're in and shit that you had to go through college, work, corrections officer, well, I have no fucking clue, but that, <laughs> and now in the industry, like, is there certain shit that you go through personally, you know, day-to-day basis or every mm-hmm. so often where it's just, it's, your validation is questioned? Um, not necessarily. But like I mentioned earlier, yeah, I went through, you know, that that phase already where I did feel like my passion in the past was softball. Softball, I was an athlete, you know, for about 16 years and um, softball was my passion. Softball led me to college and led me to getting a scholarship you know, to be able to um, get my degree and everything. Yeah. And sad to say, but I dealt with racism in college. Oof. And that's the first time I've ever experienced that, being 17 years old, straight, fresh out of high school, graduated 20, 2011, June, straight mm. into into college, September 2011. So I'm like, damn. And that's where I experienced it for the first time. I was young. I was like, I, I didn't know anything else but Baldwin Park. I didn't know anything else. Yeah. And, you know, it was, a, it, was a, it was just an experience where I felt like my skin color was a problem. Mm. Never thought I would deal with that at such a young age. That's and crazy. first and foremost, feeling that with that where my passion was, softball yeah. and sports and athletics. It's like, damn, like they chose me to be here. But... I'm dealing with this. And of course it's going to be out and like people either, you know, going to see this. It's, it's okay. You know, I'm, I'm, ex- I'm sharing my experiences and it's led me to today, but you know, it's just, that's where I question like, damn, am I worth being here? Mm-hmm. Like they chose me to be here, but I don't feel, I feel this big, <laughs> but you know, I didn't, I'm the type of person where it's like, you know, my mom raised me to be a tough ass female. You know, mm. don't ever take shit from nobody. Don't ever take shit from nobody. Either you have to... They never taught me to physically fight. They taught me to, you know, hear the bullshit, see the bullshit, but keep on fucking pushing. Keep fucking Damn. pushing. And like I mentioned earlier, I almost left, but I didn't leave. Because I'm like, you know what? I'm two years in. I'm mm. halfway there. Keep going. I started. Why am I not finishing? Keep fucking going and finish. And I did. I dealt with the bullshit. But it got better within the years. And I'm like, you know what? Might as well. I'm getting my shit paid for. Keep going. I'm playing softball. Get my degree. Keep going. Yeah. Um, But as of right now, I don't feel as though um, my validation is questioned. Being Latina, um, you know, I'm strong on that for sure because, you know, I am part of a minority. But I'm very, very big on that for sure. And you know, and I want to be that that big inspiration. I want to continue to be that inspiration to many, you know, Latina women out there too. To you know, keep striving, keep going, and whatever your goal is, get to that. 
it's 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 possible just let those struggles happen let those bumps come through life it's gonna fuck it you're gonna you're gonna get to that to that light at the end of the tunnel yeah i'm big okay. on that too man like i've always preached that to people that light at the end of the tunnel you'll get to there you'll get there you'll get there and i'm i still have yet to get there i still have yet Ooh, to get there but dang. man it's, it's but it's like, a journey it's a journey like for sure. i think a lot of people do they don't pay attention to the journey part. They don't pay attention to what it takes to get what it there. Takes to get there. They yeah. just see the end result. Like mm-hmm. it's as easy as, as I want a dream job. I got it. Boom. This is it. I got it. But it's like, all right, what did you have to go through? Yeah. What kind of how, how you're just saying what kind of bullshit you had to go through? What kind of bullshit job you had to get that before that? Mm-hmm. Like again, the sacrifice that one takes is the it's. Literally the journey that builds who you are. Yeah. Builds who you are as a person and it's just who you have around you. Yeah. I think it's very important. Who you have in your inner circle, who do you have as your support system, who you have, you know, just referencing like mentors, shit like that. Like Yeah. Like, oh man, that's so now that you you're in that what Damn, you, <laughs> you, you literally just because of what you just said, this really, you know how you said you want to inspire those other women, Latina yeah. women and women in general, like to get to their happy, their happy point. Yeah, and it's and just, it's, it's it it sounds so easy, but it, and it's not. Like life isn't gonna take you to just the easy route. You have to go through, like I mentioned, you have to go through the bullshit. You have to go through those struggles. And, you know, I always, I've always um, just preach, like, just keep going, keep, keep pushing. Like, you've yeah. made the necessary steps to get there. Why stop? You know? But it can take people. It doesn't, some people it takes, you know, a year, two years, or even months. It can take a person 10 years. Yeah. But you got there. You got there. That's that's the goal. You know, mm-hmm. it could take. It don't matter. You know, one person achieved this in five years. Which person achieved it in ten years? It, but you got there. It don't yeah. matter. The life, the time period does not matter to me. It Oof. don't matter. As long as you get there and you made the necessary struggles and necessary steps to get there, you got there. And like my like I like I mentioned like my my journey. I found. I still have yet to continue to find though. But I've made the necessary choices and changes in my life to really find or to continue to follow where my destiny is leading me. Um, and it's still it's still taking me to where, where I belong. And it's like, damn, like, I left a career. I was making yeah. hell of money. But I'm like, man, it, it, it ain't worth it. It's not worth it. And I was really big on my happiness and my well-being and my mental health. Because I was really struggling last year. And I'm like, damn. And then the pandemic hit. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> like, I'm really, really living through this shit right now. <laughs> we yeah. really were. It's like, seriously, we're all locked up. I'm like, damn. And I left this job. You know? But That's how you said it. Like, you saw the light at the end of the tunnel. I and, did. you know, you, you found it. Yeah. And now there's a different light to get to. Mm-hmm. So, it, so, bringing it to the next point. Like, what would you tell, you know, a, a young woman trying to figure this out trying to strive for whatever she's striving that maybe is suffering or in the situation like where she's half in half out or doesn't know to give up a secure thing to something that makes her happy like what would do you have some sort of just words of wisdom man Mm. follow your heart if you feel that instinct your intuition is your best friend like i've trusted my intuition i've trusted my instinct follow your heart echale pinche ganas because you know for damn sure Hell what you're yeah. worth what makes you happy so huh <gasps> damn oh, really? por mucho. we I'm, did where are we at <laughs> 17 wow we said damn. <laughs> then Damn, that was crazy. Dang. That's good, bro. But, but you know, yeah. what, what you were just she saying. She was continuing echa pinche ganas. Yeah, echa de pinche ganas. Echa de pinche ganas. That would be something for sure to be just 
Keep going. Trust your heart. Trust your intuition. Do what makes you happy. Because I was told that so many so many times last year. Do what makes you happy. Like, fuck it. Just keep going. Yeah. You'll find something better. You know? It's like, yeah, you're right. You're right. I will. And I'm still going. And I am happy. I'm happy. You know? And just find what makes you happy. If it don't make you happy, look for something better. Keep climbing that ladder. Keep climbing that ladder because it only gets better from here. That's a good Period. way to end this. <laughs> That's a good way to fucking end this. Yeah. Are you going to pour another one? Sure. Oh, yeah. Fuck it. Might as well. We got to pour it. This is, this is the end. It. This is the Let's toast to it. life part, Toast dude. to life. This is a toast to life, to the journey, to... To your, your guys' journey, for sure, shit. too, man. Because you guys are making this happen. To your guys' journey in Torrance, in your boot yes. camp, and getting certified. Wait, maybe we'll take you to Fontana with us. Yeah. Hey. Cool. Go start Personal training there. over there. there training. <laughs> but in, in all honesty, like again, you, if you reach this far, like take the gems that that were just dropped that yeah. you dropped for everybody, and I appreciate that, and I'm sure everybody listening appreciates that too because they just need that that little extra push and that yeah. assurance. So and we're here for it. We're here for Jeez, it. So toast Cheers. to life. There it is. Toast to life. Stay tuned. Ooh. Oh my god. <laughs> mm. Zero. Zero. <laughs> 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 <laughs>